Hello everyone, welcome to EduTab. And today we have Mr. Aman with us. He has recently cleared RBI Grade B examination. And today we will know about all the strategies that he followed for the examination as well as whatever source that he preferred while uh, preparing for uh, exam, right? So hello, sir, how are you? I'm good, hello. Hi. So uh, first of all, heartiest congratulations for the big achievement. Thank you, thank you so much. Right. Uh, so, sir, uh, today we will know about uh, whatever strategies uh, you followed for examination to, to have a better insight. Uh, so, sir, we will start with your education qualification, like what you did and how you ended up preparing for RBI. Okay. Uh, I have done engineering in electronics and communication branch, and I graduated in the year 2015. Thereafter, I did job in MNC for around two and a half years. After that, I was selected in SBI PO, so I joined SBI. And in SBI only, I got to know about the RBI Grade B exam. As some of my batchmates were already preparing for RBI, so as I was from science background and non-commerce background, so I asked them if I can clear this exam or not. Mm -hmm. So they told me yes, you can clear, uh, as many of the engineers have previously cleared this exam. So I asked them about the various sources to refer. So one of my friends told me about EduTab also. So there uh, I referred to EduTab by watching videos and the content sheet. So it really helped me in getting the basics and concepts of economics and finance and management as this was quite new for me. Hey. So, so that... I prepared, okay. Please, so, sorry, please continue. Okay, okay, no, mm -hmm. please continue. Now, I was asking that you just said that you were uh, in uh, SBI. And yes. the post that you were holding, it has such an Im immense work pressure. So how did you manage? Because you said for yourself yeah, that uh, you belong to science background and not from commerce. That's and then that's just coming to the new background and along that you also were working and that too in SBI. So, so how did you manage everything? Yes. Pressure nowadays the bank is quite high. So I have to push every day, I have to put on more efforts so as to prepare for this RBI grade exam simultaneously with my job. So it was quite difficult, but yes, I, uh, as I was preparing for the last two years, so I finally made it this way. Right. So it means uh, you were uh, preparing for RBI for uh, one or two years. Along yes, with, yes. with the job. Along with the job, I was with it. Right. So, yes. so you used to study in the morning or in the evening. So what was your strategy? Like, how did you push yourself? Uh, because that is quite difficult. Once you come exhausted from SBI, especially from SBI work, uh, then you have to study also. Then, like, how was it? It's quite uh, impossible to imagine. Yes, initially, I also thought that it would be very difficult for me to prepare simultaneously with the job. Uh, sometimes I also thought of quitting and resigning from the job and pre preparing for RBI alone. But uh, yes, I pushed, pushed myself. Uh, mostly, I used to study in the mornings as I'm a morning person. But uh, also sometime when there was uh, less work in the office, I used to come home early and used to study at night also. Right. So you utilize whatever time you can get uh, yes, for yes. the preparation. Also, so, uh, my uh, my branch was around uh, 40 kilometers away from where I live. So I had to travel and it takes almost one hour to reach there. So while traveling also, I used to um, log in your editor and watch the videos by um, playing the Play, by putting the playback speed to 1.5x or 2x at the time of revising. So it re, it also really helped me. And this way I was able to utilize the time. Hey, so sir, uh, we'll start with phase one. Uh, uh, to have better understanding for the aspirant also that what are the different subjects that come in different phase of the examination, as well as to have a clear overview of what sources or what strategy they can have for different sections. So sir, we'll start with uh, quant and reasoning. Basically, there are two different sections, but uh, they are, uh, they are uh, used uh, together. So, so, what was your preparation uh, strategy for quant as well as for reasoning? For quant and reasoning, uh, they were my strengths. 
so basically i stick with my with the mock test uh, i prepared the mock i gave around 5 to 6 mock tests before the prelim examination and for english also i gave a mock test wait because uh, qre and english uh, you had good hold on that but yes, still yes. one needs to prepare when going for examination so yes, you sir. went with a uh, mock test so that you have a fair idea that what kind of questions are asked yes, in sir. examination and also to look at that if you can do all the questions in the set time right and then and for yes, for reasoning i also watched some videos in, which really helped me to increase my speed but i think i want to take to add that phase one is uh, i think most important yeah, in this section uh, as many students don't take it seriously even last time i also did not take it seriously and uh, i was not able to clear prelims only i focused my preparation solely on mains and i took it very lightly that i will easily clear this phase one but as around 50000 students appear for phase one and only around 2000 or 3000 appear for phase 2 so i think it is very important that students focus on prelims examination right most of the yeah, most of the candidate they think that pre would be easier for them yes, to crack yes. so they focus much on the phase 2 yes, yes. but uh, in this process sometimes you're not even able to clear phase 1 right uh, so sir uh, what about a general awareness what were the sources did you follow for that for general awareness uh, i read the hindu monthly review and also affairs cloud and as i was also giving many exams like the nabard and sebi also mm. so i was uh, i mean updated with the current affairs because this time in pre uh, even the current affairs beyond 6 months came like from 7 to 8 bank 7 to 8 month next question was also asked so it really helped me in the prelims also so i was able to clear the cut off very easily this time so affairs mm. cloud is i think is a good okay source uh, so sir uh, this was for the phase 1 uh, now sir coming to the phase 2 first of all uh, because this time the phase 2 pattern was changed initially yes. it was uh, more of uh, the object it was objective but this time it was objective plus descriptive yes. so what was your reaction when you got to know that this time it's completely different and you have to start i guess because descriptive is something very uh, it's not easy to write yes. so sir what was your reaction when you got to know okay okay so this sense the syllabus has been changed i was preparing for just for the objective portion and now this new thing has come and how you manage that i think it is uh, this was quite surprising as yes. i think many things was changed this time like the psychometric test was also introduced and the weightage of interview was also increased and this descriptive section was also added So yes, it was uh, quite difficult for me as I have to prepare for descriptive in a very less number of days. And the main difference in preparing for objective and descriptive is like if you don't know, if you at least know something about any any topic. So if any question comes in the uh, exam, you can recollect the topic by seeing the options. or if you know about other options so you can eliminate the other options and can correct and can choose the correct option very well then if you don't know about the topic so it is very hard to write about that because the word limit is also quite high mm. as for 15 marks question it was 600 words and for 10 marks question it was 400 words so if you are not aware about the topic so it was very hard so what i did was that Uh, what i believe the question uh, about the topic that these are the important topics so i prepared around 10 to 12 points relating to each topic and learned them so that at the time of exam i can elaborate those points and can write a good answer also as i have never prepared for any descriptive descriptive type of paper before mm. so i looked up to the upsc toppers answer key which is available over the vision is and so i used to get a idea how to frame a answer how to structure your answer so i read many answer sheets and it gave me a good idea so this is how i prepared for the descriptive part right uh, so sir as you said that uh, you chose some 10 to 12 topics and in that you wrote the points no i hmm. chose many topics and wrote right. 10 to 12 points for each topic 
Ray. So, sir, on what basis did you cho uh, choose those topics? Means, were they of some national importance, or you feel like that they were important from the syllabus that was provided by RBI? Yes, yes. Uh, from the syllabus itself, I thought I believe that I think it is important. And it might come. So, for those topics only, I prepared the ten to twelve points, right. which might come. Right. And uh, did that help? Yes, it helped. Yeah. So, uh, sir, can you please tell one or two topics that you remember now uh, that can be important for uh, examination? Like we'll start with ESI means one at least one topic that is of uh, general importance uh, as being in ESI syllabus. Like in ESI, I believe that poverty is quite important topic, which uh, I should prepare well, and it came in that exam also. So it really helped me. Um, but it's, uh, it was a topic. Uh, different question was asked. But mm -hmm. if you know something about the topic, so you can write something. Okay. Because and also one approach I followed was that I have to attempt all the questions. Because I think some students did not attempt all the questions. They left one question. So even if I was not able to complete 600 words, I, complete, I wrote around 500 words in our mm -hmm. 15 marks. And in 10 marks question, I wrote around 350 words. So I must, my main focus was that I have to attempt all the questions. And the okay. yeah, so instead of uh, just uh, going for one or two answers of every words, you better you thought of uh, answering all the questions, uh, so that at least you can gain some marks. Because uh, well, actually, because if uh, a person is writing six hundred words, it doesn't mean that he'll get the full marks. Yes, so yes. instead of uh, having that uh, uncertainty, it's better to attempt much questions so that you can at least have some marks in your hands. Uh, but sir, uh, talking about the sources uh, for ESI, FM, what were the sources that you uh, think are good for preparation or what you prefer? Well, I actually relied on editor material because I had very less time and I was from a non-commerce background. Hmm. So editor videos really helped me and the content sheet provided by the editor really helped me in forming a material. Also, there were some books also which I uh, referred to for gaining extra knowledge about the topic. And in the topic which I failed uh, some confusion, I referred to some books also. Hey, uh, so sir, do you, uh, can you tell us some books, uh, book name if you remember? On the economics, uh, Ramesh Singh hey. and uh, Prasanna Chandra, the FM book. Hmm. Hey. So you pre refer to some uh, online education material and some to your books for the second phase and for descriptive especially you felt like instead of answering every question uh, sorry one or two question and then leaving a rest you went for all the questions right and then uh, what is the importance of all the reports and schemes do you feel like uh, it should be needed to be added in the descriptive portion or do you feel like if someone is just going for in general uh, basic uh, static knowledge regarding the subject if that would also do so what's your take on that I think it is quite important if you add in your answer the reports and the schemes also, it will give a it will give you extra marks. And if you add some current current affairs also in your answer, then it also you will achieve higher marks. So I think it is actually quite important because it will also help in your objective objective section also, Great. the reports and the scheme section. Great. So that would help in both. Uh, so, sir, uh, in fact, even for the phase one of GA, and then uh, here we have objective also. Uh, so, sir, uh, could you please tell us that what kind of questions are asked? It means more are they more statistical based or are they more conceptual? What is the uh, nature of the questions for objective? Uh, for phase one. Uh, both for phase one and phase two, uh, the current affair portion. I'm, I want to ask. That are the cons uh, current affairs are conceptual, like we just have to name something, or they are more data based that we have to provide in which data is asked and we have to go with specific numbers. Uh, for phase one, I think the questions are more general in nature. Uh, they can ask anything uh, relating to like uh, awards, schemes, and the country capital. They can ask you anything. Uh, with, so I think for that, Affairs Cloud is a very good source because it covers all the things. And if you read that, it is, I think, very sufficient. But for phase two, you have to do selective reading. Like you have to know the basics of banking also. You have to know the basics of economics. And some questions from RBI were also asked this year. 
or whatever so it is very important to follow the rbi website also so as to so as you know in which direction rbi is going and what it is what new things it is doing hmm. so i think phase 1 and phase 2 is quite different in terms of current affairs and database question is more option phase 2 right and uh, questions from rbi is also asked right that is why you uh, yes. want to refer you want aspirants to refer to website as well Yes. Yeah. So, so this was for phase two, and now talking about the interview. Uh, like, how was it? What kind of panel did you face? Uh, was that cordial one, or was that uh, the as the people say that uh, very rude and not so interested type of uh, panel? Well, actually, there were three panels this time, and mine was uh, Amitav Ranjan sir panel, and it was it was quite cordial, but. Uh, the start was uh, really uh, surprising as when i entered the room and the first question he asked me he asked me like okay aman let me start by asking a very difficult question so i was like oh my god <laughs> what is going on if this mm -hmm. is the start then i yes. i think i need to prepare for next year <laughs> but uh, <laughs> i did not lose my cool mm -hmm. i thought over the question i made three four points and then confidently delivered the my answer mm -hmm. and when you first give, when you give for your first answer then the whole interview process uh, goes on smoothly you know, you gain confidence but uh, he started by us ask, by asking me this okay aman let me start by asking a difficult question right uh, so the questions uh, were they from your uh, the job that you are doing or were they from the bio data that you provided it means what kind of questions generally are being asked in an interview actually my interview was more of a opinion based and a suggestion based interview they did not ask me about any direct questions or any they did not ask me any hr based question and yes few questions from my work profile was Asked as I was a banker, so they asked me a few questions regarding that also. But many questions were they were asking me opinions and suggestions like how to improve the financial inclusion, what more can be done, and a uh, few questions from my work profile also like the they asked me the sort of analysis of SBI. As on the previous day of my interview, the quarter one results of SBI came, so. They asked me the sort analysis of SBI also. Hmm. So questions were more of opinion based. And were the questions were also? But the experience was quite wonderful. The uh, the interview experience was quite wonderful. I really enjoyed it. Great. So, sir, the were the questions they were asked from uh, RBI uh, institution also? No, they do not ask me. Right. So they focus much on uh, SBI. Rather than RBI, because you were yes, working yes. in that. Yes, I was so, working in that. Yeah, so if an aspirant who is working in a particular firm, he should be aware of everything that is going on there, uh, because yes, that yes. can be asked in the uh, in the interview also. Yes, right. Definitely. Uh, right. So uh, this was all, uh, Mr. Aman. According to him, for phase one, if you're good at something, for example, he was good at QRE and English. He went for mock test because mock tests are very important. Before examination, they give you an idea what kind of questions are asked, and also to uh, check uh, or to revise whatever you have studied before. For uh, for current affairs, for GA section, he has its sources which he has named uh, during the interview. Then for phase two, uh, he says uh, read more reports and schemes so that you can include that in your descriptive portion, and it uh, it. It helps, and he also says instead of going for two to three questions with six hundred words, that is the word limit. Uh, you should attempt all the questions, even if uh, you cannot uh, fulfill the word limit criteria in every uh, in every question. Apart from that, uh, he also says that objective uh, is also important. So whatever current affairs you are studying, that that would help you both in the objective section also and in subjective section also. That is the descriptive part. For interview, uh, he was asked much uh, questions on what uh, on the firm he was working now. That is SBI, uh, the institution uh, he was working on, and uh, the questions that were asked they were more concept uh, based. Uh, what has been asked to him. So, uh, sir, have I missed anything? No, you have covered everything. Right. So but so for interview, uh, the aspirants can should refer to RBI website and the speeches, especially the speeches. 
which are given by the governor and the deputy mm -hmm. governor. They should religiously follow the RBI website and the RBI annual report also. Great. So uh, the things that are related to RBI, because uh, you should be aware of the institution that you're applying for, you want to join. Uh, so there's uh, something that you want to say to the aspirant who are preparing for RBI grade B? Uh, I would like to say that uh, take the prelim exam very seriously because last year I did not take it seriously and I thought I missed one year. So you should take phase one as serious as the phase two examination. And also if you are unable to crack this year, so you should prepare for next year because consistency is the key. And you should be consistently, consistently preparing for the exam. And one day surely you will achieve your dreams. Right. Consistency is the key and also the dedication that uh, one should have uh, because he did everything, uh, the, all the preparation while he was working in SBI and that will in such a, a good a post uh, with all the work pressure that uh, the organization have. Uh, so, so thank you so much for joining us, uh, for sharing all thank your... Thank you for having me for all your views and strategies with us and i'm sure that it, it is going to help a lot of aspirants who are preparing for examination and who are working as well uh, because uh, we have to compete uh, the people who are working they have to compete with those people who are uh, who may be studying a whole day so the competition for them is quite higher in comparison to that's what i feel uh, maybe the competition who are, who are uh, doing job as well the competition for them yes, is yes. quite higher uh, because they have to compete with the people who are giving their all time uh, for the particular examination only. Uh, so, sir, thank you so much uh, for joining us and sharing thank your you. views. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much.